Right guys, so one of the very important topic in clinical neuroanatomy that we'll be discussing today is the neural tube defects. Okay, so if you come across these neural tube defects in anatomy, these neural tube defects, when do they develop and why do they develop? When do they develop is they develop during third to fourth week of pregnancy. And why do they develop is mainly because of folic acid deficiency, which is also called as your vitamin B9. And all of you know this thing that every pregnant female should receive enough amount of folic acid during her pregnancy to prevent this neural tube defects. So in clinical anatomy today, we shall be discussing what are the different kinds of neural tube defects you will come across this third to fourth week of pregnancy. Now, if you look at the neural tube which is present beside me, this neural tube has got an anterior neuropore and this one is called as a posterior neuropore. Right now, when does this anterior neuropore close generally? This anterior neuropore in you and me it generally closes by day 25. Okay, by day 25, this anterior neuropore should close. And in the same way, if you look at the posterior neuropore, the posterior neuropore should close by day 28. Okay, what happens if the anterior neuropore is not closing by day 25? That would lead to a condition called as anencephaly. So you can see the picture of anencephaly here. In the same way, what happens when the posterior neuropore does not close by day 28, that would lead to a condition called as spina bifida. Okay. So coming to spina bifida, there are four different types of spina bifida which you have to know. One is called as spina bifida occulta. Second one is called as spina bifida with meningocele. Third one is called as spina bifida with myelomeningocele and fourth one is called as rachis kisses. Okay. So let us discuss about each one of them along with the pictures over here. So the first one is spina bifida occulta. Now in spina bifida occulta you can see the picture over here. In the lumbosacral region there is a tuft of hair. Right. So this tuft of hair is what is called as your spina bifida occulta. Now the second important one is rachis kisses. Now what is this? This is one of the very important thing which was previously even asked in the exams. So in here you can see a vertebra, right? Now all of you know that vertebra is having a transverse process. It is also having a spinous process. Now how is the spinous process formed? Spinous process is formed by the fusion of the dorsal arch like this. For example, if the dorsal arch is not formed, then what will happen? The vertebra is open like this. Yes or no? You can look at another picture there as the vertebra is completely open. Now through this open vertebra, you can very clearly see that not only the spinal cord, even the meninges are also herniating outside, right? So what, what is completely seen over here? You can see an open vertebra because the dorsal arch is not formed. Second is you can see a spinal cord that is protruding outside. You can also see the CSF that is leaking outside, right? So these three things together you uh, combine in case of rachis kisses. Now you can look at a picture of rachis kisses. So this is a picture of rachis kisses here where there is, as I already told you, there is open vertebra, open spinal cord. And not only that, you can even see the shininess over here. This is nothing but the leakage of CSF. Now it is very important to differentiate between spina bifida with meningocele, spina bifida with myelomeningocele. Meningo in the sense meninges, only meninges are protruding out. That is called meningocele. Milo meningocele in the sense, Milo in the sense both spinal cord as well as the meninges are protruding out. So you call it as Milo meningocele. Now if you look at the picture here, right, so this is called as spina bifida with meningocele where you can see how the herniation of meninges is happening here, right. Now side to that, if you look at another picture that is called as spina bifida with Milo meningocele where this part of the spinal cord and part of the meninges are also protruding out. And you know very well why are they protruding out. Why? Because the dorsal arch is not fused. Right? Now, if you look at the real pictures of the babies with meningocele and myelomeningocele, so you can see and compare both the pictures over here. Now, if you look at these pictures, what can you infer from these pictures, guys? In case of meningocele and in case of myelomeningocele, in both of these conditions, on the dorsal region you see a very big cyst, right? But what is the difference is that this cyst is glowing or it is shiny, which means this is only the meninges which is present over here, which is also called as meningocele. And on the other hand, is that cyst glowing? No, it is in the form of a mass, 
right which is not glowing which means within that cyst you have got meninges at the same time you have got spinal cord so if you see any cyst which is glowing right so in a neonate so that would be mostly meningocele and in the same way if you see cyst which is not glowing that is called as your myelomeningocele now how do you diagnose this neural tube defects is that right by physical examination itself you can diagnose it second way is you have to check the alpha fetoprotein levels okay now what is the connection between the alpha fetoprotein levels with these types of spina bifida for example let us say normally let us say i am the fetus okay surrounding me there is amniotic fluid okay now normally what happens is that from my liver alpha fetoprotein is released and that is entering into the bloodstream okay now it is in the bloodstream i'm not telling that it is going to enter into the amniotic fluid it is still in the bloodstream itself now in case of spina bifida and in spina bifida occulta and in case of anencephaly in these two conditions the spinal cord is not open the spinal cord is not exposed the meninges are not exposed so when the spinal cord and meninges are not exposed then the alpha fetoprotein from the bloodstream cannot enter into the surrounding amniotic fluid and that is the reason why whenever you check the amniotic fluid within the amniotic fluid there will be normal levels of alpha fetoprotein or absolutely no levels of alpha fetoprotein right now when it comes to spina bifida with meningocele and myelomeningocele in these two conditions you know that the meninges are exposed the spinal cord is also exposed in one of them so in this condition what will happen whatever alpha fetoprotein is released into the blood that will finally leak into the amniotic fluid so right now in a patient with meningocele and myelomeningocele when you take a sample of amniotic fluid there you will find elevated levels of alpha fetoprotein so always and always remember in case of spina bifida occulta and in case of anencephaly there are going to be a normal levels of alpha fetoprotein whereas the spinal cord and the meninges exposing conditions like meningocele and myelomeningocele there is elevated levels of alpha fetoprotein